Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome to my first Skyrim Challenge run. My last run in Fallout 4 as a Protectron was painfully slow. So today, we're going to take on something a bit faster while we find out if I can beat Skyrim Legendary Survival Difficulty with only summons. Before we get into the run, let's lay down some ground rules. I can only use summoned NPCs to deal damage. I must play the entire game on the Legendary Difficulty with Survival Mode turned on. I can't use any any bugs or glitches on purpose to exploit the game. I can only use visual mods with the exception of one that we'll talk about in a minute, and I cannot use console commands for anything but fixing bugs. With the rules of the run laid out, let's take a look at the challenge itself. I'm sure someone has done this before, but I'm not sure if they did it on the hardest difficulty and with survival on, and I definitely haven't seen it, so I'm excited to see if I can do it myself. I'm writing the script as I go, and all of this part has been written prior to beginning the run. If if you want to skip past my starting thoughts and get right into the gameplay, skip to the timecode on screen now. With them gone, let's dump some info. So, fun fact to start off with, I've never beat Skyrim. I've played maybe like 15 hours of it before starting this challenge, so before we get into the details of summons and how they work, let's look at Legendary Difficulty and Survival Mode. So, Legendary Difficulty is simple, it only affects damage. We're going to be dealing 25% of the damage we would on the Adept Difficulty, and we will be taking 300% more damage than on Adept as well. So basically everything is going to be tanky but us. It's really rough but straightforward at least. Moving on to survival, it basically just makes life really difficult. I'm showing all the changes on screen but the big ones are of course the addition of hunger, removing fast travel, reduced carry weight, and no passive health regeneration. Also leveling up requires us to sleep in a bed which might be annoying. While survival mode in Skyrim seems harsher with the debuff, I'm going to be experiencing, it seems much easier than Fallout 4's iteration simply due to the fact that I can save whenever I want. Moving on to the challenge itself, let's take a look at the big spells we're going to be using. We're gonna have to start off with Conjure Familiar. This summons a ghostly wolf to fight for us for 60 seconds. Next up is the spell Conjure Flame Atronach, which will summon a fiery spirit to fight for us for 60 seconds. There's also later on gonna be versions of this spell with Frost and Storm storm spirits to fight for us, and I'm also banning the use of any of the reanimation spells, as I want to leave the option of coming back and doing a run as a necromancer later. There are also some DLC summons that I could use, but I'm not going to mention them here, as I'm unsure if I'm going to be doing any of the DLC content to get them. With that laid out, I think it's time to get into the action. We start off the game tied up in the back of a horse-drawn carriage with a nice man named Rayloff who has a chat with us about a horse thief, a rebellion, and some place called Sovngarde that we're headed to. I just sit there and listen until the carriage stops and the horse thief catches an arrow to the knee before a guy asks me who I am. After spending a bit of time morphing in front of him, I give him our name and get told that I'm about to have my head detached from my body. I then watch the most eager execution victim ever before making my way up to the chopping block only for a dragon to save me. Aww, what a kind little fella. I then run around the castle, town keep? I run around Helgen with Rayloff and Hadvar until they give me an ultimatum. I choose Rayloff because he didn't try and chop off my head, and because blue is a better color. After entering the keep with Rayloff, he cuts off my bindings, and I put on some Stormcloak gear before watching him fight two Imperials for about three minutes. We then head deeper into the keep together until we find a storeroom with two more Imperials, and I spend another two minutes watching Rayloff fight. This early game section is, uh, really boring when you can't fight. Either way, we continue until we find a torture chamber where Rayloff and three other Stormcloaks are fighting a couple of Imperials. I decide to spend the time reading a book and picking some locks while they bash the heads of the Imperials in. I then follow this merry band watching them fight more Imperials until the dragon breaks a bridge after Rayloff and I cross it. With no way to go but forward, we progress into the cave system and now is the time I want to mention the one mod that isn't visual in nature. I'm using the Insects Be Gone mod to replace the spiders in the game with bears. I don't think this really affects much in the grand scheme of things, and it lets me avoid my arachnophobia. So if you don't like it, too bad. After watching Rayloff fight bears for six minutes, we sneak past a real bear and find our way out of the cave. It's here where I enable survival mode, and uh, I'm over encumbered. Well, I'm stubborn, and after my last run, I have more patience than I care to admit, so I walk extremely slowly all the way to Riverwood with Rayloff, activate 
activating the Mage Stone on the way, and when we arrive, Rayloff talks to his sister Gerder, and she gives us a bunch of stuff and a key to her house before asking us to head to Whiterun and speak with the Jarl and warn him about the dragon attack at Helgen. I agree, and then go to the Riverwood Trader to sell all the loot I got from Helgen. Afterwards, I take a leisurely stroll south and come upon some people fighting a giant. I don't help because I can't, and they tell me they're a group of mercenaries called the Companions. I then head to Whiterun, have a funny interaction with a guard as I force him to slowly walk at me for a while before telling him I was sent from Riverwood. He tells me to go speak with the Jarl, and I go to do just that, but I get distracted doing the same thing to his Huskarl that I did to the guard. Either way, he sends some men to Riverwood to protect it from a dragon attack, and then we speak with his court wizard Farangar, who wants me to go to Bleak Falls Barrow to retrieve some fancy rock. I say okay, and then trade with him to get the Conjure Familiar and Conjure Flame Atronach spells before heading back to Riverwood, where the path to Bleak Falls Barrows starts. I head up the path, killing a wolf on the way, and then come across three bandits in a tower. I don't have enough Magicka to summon a Flame Atronach yet, so I keep using Conjure Familiar and the fight is brutally slow. After a while, I end up separating one of the bandits from the others, and while I kill her, I end up dying to a wolf that surprised me. Trying again, this time, I lead her away earlier and kill her without too much issue. So far, combat has just been me watching my wolf kill things, and it's really slow. After killing her, I head into Riverwood to get some food and some sleep so I can level up getting more Magicka and using a skill point to make all basic conjuration spells cost half the Magicka. After this, I head up the mountain again and kill the last bandit in the tower pretty easily. Apparently, my familiar killed one of them in the first encounter, and I didn't even know notice. Either way, after some minor looting, I head further up the mountain and find more bandits at the entrance to the barrow. This fight is going pretty well, but I'm slowly freezing to death, and after killing the first bandit, there are only two left with bows, and one of them gets this absolutely brutal headshot on me, killing me in one shot. The freezing mechanic is really, really rough. It's like the radiation mechanic from Fallout 4 on how it works. It lowers my maximum HP and makes me move slower, and I find out on my next attempt that it eventually kills you if you don't find a warm place quick enough. Trying once more, I make my way all the way to the barrow, clear out the bandits outside, and enter to find that luckily the dungeon itself isn't freezing, so I'm safe from that at least. Right inside the entrance, there are two more bandits, and I nearly end up dying to them, but in the end, our trusty ghost doggo ends their aggression and we take a nap before heading deeper inside the dungeon. I happen upon a bandit pulling a lever which triggers an arrow trap which kills him. After that, I solve the simple puzzle he was too dumb to figure out before watching our dog munch on some overgrown rats and finding a doorway blocked by webs and uh, that's a bear. Okay, so I have to break the webs and since it's not really dealing damage in combat, I don't count it as as breaking the rules of the run to destroy the webs. So I unequip one of my spells and punch the webs down and then spend the next half hour of my life fighting this bear. It kills our familiar in two hits and summoning the familiar takes about half of our magicka bar. So I end up sacrificing countless ghost wolves to this bear over the next half hour until the bear eventually dies. Oh, also, we level up a couple of times during this, and I use my perk point to half the cost of apprentice level spells and make conjuration spells last twice as long if I cast the same spell in both hands. Moving on, I cut down this bandit and he tries to double cross us. I then follow behind him and for the first time summon a flame atronach and oh my, I love this. The familiar was so weak and in comparison, the flame atronach is super powerful. It's tankier does more damage with each hit, and sets enemies on fire, damaging them over time. The Draugr we are fighting now are weak to fire, and this flame spirit lady is just burning through them so easily. There's no real difficulty until we reach the final room, and I get blown by a wall. Wait, that sounds wrong. I meant there's wind coming from this wall and I learn a word. You know what? This is just the weirdest version of Duolingo I've ever heard. Either way, after this wall does its things to me, a Draugr overlord pops out from his coffin and he is scary. He can use a shout and has an enchanted sword. I worry he will be able to kill our flame lady, but in the end, we just have to wait for a bit while she burns him alive. 
I make my way out of the dungeon and back to Riverwood, where I return the Golden Claw to the Riverwood Trader before heading to Whiterun again to turn in the quest. Farngar is speaking to some mysterious lady. I hand him the fanciest of fancy rocks, and he thanks us before we're summoned to talk with the Jarl. A city guard comes into the meeting and tells us that there's a dragon nearby, and the Jarl tells us to go fight the dragon because I quote, we have the most experience with dragons, which is really funny to me since our experience isn't in fighting dragons, but running away from them. Either way, I agree, and I head off with his Huskarl, as well as a few of the guards of the city, to a half-destroyed watchtower, and there's no dragon. Oh wait, never mind, there it is. I summon my flame lady and hide inside the tower for a long time, occasionally recasting the spell until the dragon dies and I slurp up its dragon juice. I then return to the Jarl, who gives me the title of Thane and tells me to talk to some old dudes on a mountain. I then ignore the most enthusiastic companion ever and decide to ignore the old men on the mountain too. Instead, I decide to go to Windhelm and join the true brothers and sisters of Skyrim, the Stormcloaks. I make my way to Jarl Ulfric and listen to him talk to some dude forever before talking to him myself. He says it's dangerous to talk to him and tries to be edgy before telling me to talk to his war buddy. I talk to the war buddy who tells me I'm gonna go to some frozen island and kill an ice wraith, which is a really dumb recruitment policy. Like, what if I'm just a farmer who wants to fight for Skyrim? I guess I need to learn how to fight before joining the Stormcloaks, they won't train you. Either way, I'm a little bit worried about this because if I get into the water at any point it will kill me because most water in Skyrim is considered freezing water and it just drains your health like almost immediately. So I buy a horse and luckily I can travel through water on a horse without dying. So I make it to the island pretty easily and the horse ends up fighting with the ice wraith alongside my flame lady. I don't know how to avoid this because the horse just keeps aggroing whenever I get off it to anything near me, but it doesn't matter. I end up dying trying to leave the island as I accidentally jump off a cliff killing me and the horse. I travel back, this time leaving the horse far away from the ice wraith because I felt it was cheap to let the horse fight for me. After killing the Ice Wraith, I head back to Windhelm and really quickly I want to mention that the depth of field is freaking insane in this game. It is giving me a headache and I apologize for anyone else who is bothered by things being blurry. I took a bit to try and turn it off, but it's stubborn and just doesn't really go away fully. If you know of a solid way to remove depth of field in Skyrim, let me know in the comments because this is driving me nuts. Moving on, we talk to war daddy Galmar and he commends us for surviving. After taking an oath, I become a stormcloak and head off to some ruin to find a pointy crown. When I arrive, I find Galmar as well as Rayloff and some other stormcloaks ready to storm the ruins, but apparently there's some legion men around and we're going to have to fight our way through them. My first attempt goes poorly, as I die pretty quickly to a legion bowman, and on the next attempt I decide to take things slower and let the other stormcloaks and my flame lady deal with all the legionaries before entering the ruins only to find a bunch more imperials. I slowly but surely deal with them using my flame atronach with some help from the stormcloaks until we reach a room with a set of bars stopping us from progressing. I spend a while confused as I found a puzzle that I thought would open the door, but but in reality, there was just a lever that opens the door completely unrelated to this weird hidden room puzzle. After opening the complex door, I find another one of those claw doors that we found in Bleak Falls Barrow, which I'm just realizing I failed to mention. But either way, there's these doors that you have to open with a claw that has symbols on it, and you have to match the symbols on the door. Either way, these doors are really silly. Like, they are pointless. Either the people of Skyrim are extremely inept and the symbols actually work Work, or this could have just been a key without the symbols since the key tells you the combination. Either way, I make my way inside the final room with the other Stormcloaks and we fight a Draugr who is wearing a pointy hat before making our way back to Windhelm and finishing the quest by giving the spiky cap to Ulfric. He then hands me an axe and sends me off to give it to the Jarl of Whiterun. I agree and go off, and I'd like to mention that the carriage system in Skyrim is so convenient. It makes the fact that fast travel is disabled not at all horrible and lets me get vaguely where I need to go pretty quickly and inexpensively. Alright, so here we are at Whiterun and I give Jarl Bulgriff the axe and he tells me to return it to Ulfric after a bunch of dialogue that made me very bored. Okay then, 
back to Windhelm, I give the axe back to Ulfric, and he tells Galmar it's time to take over Whiterun by force. So I grab another carriage to Whiterun, and the battle is starting. I listen to Galmar give a long speech and then storm the gates. At first, things go well, and I manage to make my way past the first barricade without too much trouble before getting confused as to where I need to go. I jump up on some rubble and get stuck inside an empty tower with no magicka and end up dying to an imperial archer. My next attempt goes just as poorly as I manage to get to the drawbridge controls but die to some more arrows before lowering it. On my third attempt, I notice that two of the catapults the Stormcloaks are using aren't even pointed towards the city, which was quite amusing to me. I then die before the first barricade because an archer, and I have to say, I hate bows and arrows. After that, I decide to play super cautiously and let the Stormcloaks do the majority of the fighting. The fight inside the city was pretty much a wash. I do nearly die to my own stupidity, but overall the defenders were pushovers. Our Flame Lady is quite strong, and I make my way inside the keep and summon my Flame Lady before watching her and the Stormcloaks destroy the last few guards in the Jarl. Afterwards, I'm told to tell Ulfric the good news, and uh, the carriage outside isn't there, so I have to ride my horse all the way to Wind helm and spend a night at the inn before talking to Ulfric. He then gives me a silly nickname we'll call you Ice Veins now. as well as a sword and says I'm free to do as I wish to fight the Imperials but also go to a camp near Falkreath. Heading off towards the camp I start by taking a carriage to Falkreath and a uh, dragon attacks. After watching the fight and helping out with my flame lady, the dragon eventually dies and we hop on our horse and make our way to the Stormcloak camp. I talk to Galmar and he tells me to meet up with some scouting party who will help me take a fort. And wouldn't you guess it? The scouting party is led by none other than our buddy Rayloff and after some light discussion about the horrors of war, he tells me of an underwater cave that I can use to infiltrate the fort. I head off to the cave and get detected? Oh well, um, I then die because the freezing water is just murderous. I try again, but yet again die before reaching the underwater cave due to the freezing water again. Well, that isn't gonna work, so I decide brute force is my best option, and things go well. I have a few dicey moments, but hiding and letting the Stormcloaks and my flame lady do their thing, we clear the fort's courtyard, and I then enter the prison, and it's rough. The first guard manages to go down to my flame lady, but the second one locks onto me, and I nearly get away by using some health potions and running but in the end he kills me with this sick animation. Luckily, I lose almost no progress since the game saves every time I enter a room, and on our second attempt we kill the few guards and save the prisoners before making our way into the main barracks of the fort, and there are a lot of Imperials in here, and it takes a long time for my summons to kill each of them. Eventually, I get into a really bad situation and have to run back out to the courtyard, and I decide to talk to Rayloff, and there's an option for him to follow. Me. I tell him to, and I don't know if this is breaking the rules or not, let me know what you think in the comments, but personally, I feel it doesn't since it feels like the Stormcloaks are supposed to enter the barracks with me anyways. Either way, we slowly but surely manage to clean up the last of the Imperials, including the fort leader, before talking to Rayloff, who tells us to go back to Windhelm and report our success. I do just that before Ulfric tells me I have yet another silly nickname. Some brothers have taken to calling you Bonebreaker. And to go help out the Stormcloaks in the Reach. At this point, I figure I'm in for a penny, in for a pound, let's win this war for the true brothers and sisters of Skyrim. If you think Skyrim belongs to the Nords and want to help out the war effort, go down below and like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Every like buys a battle axe for a Stormcloak in need. After one shameless shill, here we are at the camp in the Reach, and I get told to go do a naughty and black mailed the steward of Markar. We head over there and try to sneak into his quarters only to realize we have no lockpicks. After quickly heading off and buying one, we come back and do a little save scumming until we pick the lock on his room and make our way inside to find his Talos necklace, which we then use to blackmail him into telling us about a caravan carrying weapons and silver to solitude. I take the information back to Galmar and he sends me to meet up with some Stormcloaks to capture the wagon. I make my way over 
to them, and who would have guessed? Rayloff is here! We have really got to stop meeting like this. Either way, this fight is awkward because the Legion troops, for some reason, never got hostile towards me, so I had to watch them beat up Rayloff for quite some time until Rayloff dealt with them. He then says we make quite the team, which... <laughs> oh, it makes me giggle, before sending me back to Galmar, who gives me 400 gold and tells me to take a castle. Okay. I head off to the castle and die. This is gonna be ro no. I haven't saved since leaving Markarth after blackmailing the steward. Well, after wasting another 30 minutes of my life, I'm back, and this time I remember to save right before we assault the place. I then die again. Well, instead of boring you with a description of how I summon my flame lady and watch her kill everything, let's play a game. It's called Where's Willow? It's like Where's Waldo? Your goal is to find me in these clips of the fighting. I'll point myself out after a few seconds and let me know in the comments how many times you found me. I almost died trying to set up this game for you, which was quite funny, but in the end the fort is cleared and I head back to Windhelm and tell Ulfric. He gives me yet another silly nickname. I shall call you Snowhammer now. And sends me off to some place I can't pronounce, so I'm not gonna try. How long is this civil war, by the way? Like, feels like I've been doing this for a long time, and are these radiant quests like in Fallout 4? Does it go on forever? I hope not, but I'm gonna keep doing it. Well, I head off to help the Stormcloak some more, and where's my horse? It just disappeared? What? Huh. Well, I waltz on over to Galmar, and he tells me to get Imperial documents from a courier, so I head off down the road and find a couple of Imperials fighting some bears. I decide to help them with the bears and help myself to their horse. With the stolen horse, I prance my way over to Dragon Bridge and intimidate the innkeeper there to tell me about any Imperial couriers. She says that he just left, and with that, I head off to find him, and my stolen horse is gone. I miss my horse. Either way, I run along the road and an assassin tries to kill me? I summon my flame lady and they start fighting when the courier shows up, so while he watches the combat sports that are on display, I pickpocket the imperial documents from him and then check the body of the dead assassin. Apparently the dork brotherhood... <laughs> I <laughs> wrote dork instead of dark. Oh, that's great. Either way, they were hired to kill me, which is interesting. I make my way back to Galmar, and what's this? My horse is just chilling between some random trees near Morthal? Well, I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> horse fun. Where were we? Oh right, I return to Galmar, give him the documents, and he makes some minor alterations before I go and deliver them to the Legate at Morthal, who, uh, notices I'm in Stormcloak armor, but for some reason accepts that I'm his courier anyways. Wow, I'm starting to rethink the thing about the claw keys I said earlier. These Skyrim folk are dense. Either way, I return to Galmar, who sends us to join some Stormcloaks in taking over a fort, and you know what that means? Another round of Where's Willow? Man, I hope this bit is good because I'm spending a lot of time on it. Let me know if you all enjoy this little mini game in the comments. After taking the fort, I need to return to Ulfric, so I go and do just that. I sit on his throne and wait for him to arrive, and he gives me yet another silly nickname. You shall now be known as 
Stormblade. And some really good light armor before telling me to go talk to Galmar once more. And who would have guessed what Galmar is going to tell me to do? He says we need to go take a fort, and honestly, there's nothing more to add. By summoning my flame lady and hiding, we take yet another fort from the Imperials and return to Galmar, who tells me it's time to take Solitude. I head to the front gates of Solitude, and I'm super pumped by Ulfric's speech, and we die pretty quickly. Huh, well maybe if I go with a different tactic... nope. We die again, and again, and again, and a few more times for good measure before I realize all I really need to do is run past the defenders and make my way into the keep. So I do just that, and after some chit chat between Ulfric and General Tullius, I get to watch my flame lady as well as Ulfric and Galmar fight Legate Rike and General Tullius until they stop moving. Afterwards, Ulfric offers me the chance to execute the general, but I say nah fam, I'm good, and he does the honors. We then go outside and listen to another speech and officially give control of Skyrim to the Nords. Okay, so uh, right, what do we need to do to progress the story again? Oh. Oh, Greybeards, that's right. Well, on my way to them, I stop by this bandit camp and kill the bandits with a plan to use their corpses to level my conjuration, but for some reason Soul Trap isn't giving us experience? I find this odd, so I decide to look into it, and apparently I have to disable the unofficial Skyrim patch, so I do just that, and then load back in and spend a bit of time leveling conjuration to 50. We do end up having to fight some more bandits that show up later, but overall this netted us level 50 conjuration, and we take a skill point into Adept Conjuration. And with that, I feel we should get a new spell, but in order to do so, I have to go on one last detour before getting to the main storyline, so let's go on with it and make our way over to the College of Winterhold. In order to enter, I have to cast Conjure Flame Atronach, and uh, that's easy considering our experience. So we enter the college, get a tour, learn how wards work, and then spend way too long trying to find this NPC named Finn who sells conjuration spells in order to get the Conjure Frost Atronach spell. With a new summon in our back pocket, it's time to make our way to the Greybeards and start our journey to beat the game. After catching a wagon to Riften and dealing with all of the survival debuffs, which I'd like to mention are brutal compared to Fallout. They build up faster and have much more punishing effects on gameplay. Either way, I make my way up the 7,000 steps to High Hrothgar and on the way end up fighting some wolves and, uh, die. I didn't see that one coming. At least I got to try out my Frost Atronach, and honestly, this thing is dope. On our second attempt, we make it much further and run into a Frost Troll. After spending a small eternity watching my Frost Giant fight the troll, I switch up tactics and use my Flame Lady to finally kill it off. I then reach High Hrothgar and meet the Greybeards, a bunch of monks who took Vows of Silence? Well, are they Vows of Silence if the Greybeards focus on something called shouting? A Vow of Shouting only is more accurate, I guess. Either way, I learn how to shout much more gooder before they tell me to go grab some old dusty <gasps> sentimental horn and I head off to the crypt? Dungeon? Hole in the ground? Where they say the horn will be and start fighting through necromancers? Huh. I didn't expect to fight those. Well, we deal with the necromancer and bandits outside pretty easily before heading inside and having a prolonged fight with necromancers before dying to an arrow. Man, arrows are the bane of my existence this run. Even with good armor, I'm just too squishy to take more than one, and that's only if I'm at full HP, which is rare since I'm permanently suffering from the cold debuff, which lowers my max HP. Either way, I try again, and this time with a lot of patience, manage to defeat the first group of necromancers answers and bandits inside only for Skyrim to crash. Are you kidding me? I go through the first group again, this time quick saving afterwards, just in case, before making my way deeper into the dungeon, and things go alright for a while. I manage to kill off the last of the mages inside, and a bunch of Draugr, and I find that using both my Flame Lady and Frosty Boy for different situations to be the best option. Eventually, I make it to a more cavernous section of the dungeon and end up dying a couple of times due to these fire traps, because if they hit me, it's a one-shot, and it's really nerve-wracking 
shocking to deal with. The Draugr at this point are a joke, barely causing any issues. The only time I die is to the fire traps until I reach a puzzle, which is conveniently solved by a shout the Greybeards taught me. I make my way into the room after the puzzle and learn the hard way that the floor is pretty much lava as I step on a fire trap and die. I have to use the whirlwind shout to never touch the ground since it's nothing but fire traps, and after passing the first section I found out the cave is infested with bears and end up dying to one. My next attempt is nerve wracking as I slowly but surely kill off all the bears by using my frosty boy and I make my way into the final room of the dungeon only to find a note where the horn should have been. And and it tells me to go rent the attic room in the Riverwood Inn. Well, I guess I'll do that, so I make my way out of the dungeon and to Riverwood, and when I arrive, I ask for the attic room, and this Breton lady named Delphine gives me a room and then comes in a few seconds later and gives me the horn and asks me to speak with her. I follow her into this really cool secret room, and she tells me that the dragons aren't coming back but rather being resurrected, and because of this, her and I are gonna go kill a dragon dragon to see if I'm really dragonborn. That sounds fun, so as I head out to deal with the dragon burial mound, I'd like to tell you about the new channel memberships. Did you know that the channel members picked this challenge? Every challenge, I hold a vote to let the members decide what we do. They also get photo updates on the run and priority reply on their comments. All their support helps the channel a ton, and you can too by clicking the join button down below. Alright, here we are at the dragon's gravesite and uh, well look at that. There's a dragon. Hmm. My strategy for this fight is to use my flame lady when he's flying and then summon our frosty boy when he lands. Unfortunately though, I die to a single blast of his fire so I end up dying a lot. But eventually I do manage to go undetected and my summons along with Delphine slowly kill the dragon. Afterwards, Delphine is surprised that we're truly dragonborn and tells us to meet her back at the end and I decide to run to High Hrothgar, give the Greybeards the horn, and get Ver verbally assaulted by them before heading to the inn, where Delphine tells us her plan for me to get inside the Thalmor Embassy so I can steal information about the dragons from them. In order to sneak into the Thalmor Embassy, I need to go to Solitude, but before that I level up and get some more magicka before giving my clothes to a wood elf in a hotel, and then meet Delphine who takes all of my other gear and tells me to get into a carriage. Am I the only one who feels like this is a really elaborate kidnapping scheme? Either way, I make it to the party at the the embassy and cause a distraction by inciting a drunken businessman to try and sexually assault an elf barmaid. With our distraction working perfectly, I make my way deeper into the embassy and use my summons to kill all the Thalmor soldiers and mages before finding a prison. I free the prisoners, but then some Thalmor soldiers show up with the wood elf who helped us and they tell us to surrender. I refuse and fight them with the aid of the wood elf who dies pretty quickly. After felling the elves, I grab a key off them to the body disposal hatch and jump down it. There's a frost troll inside the cave we are using to escape and I decide it's not worth another 20 minute boxing match to kill it, so I leave the cave and make my way back to Riverwood. On the way there, I decide it's time to level Conjuration up to 100, so I spend a bit over an hour casting Soul Trap on this dead bandit until I reach level 100, and before we continue the main storyline, there's a side quest I want to do. So I head to the College of Winterhold and speak to Finnis again, and I ask him if there's anything more to learn about Conjuration, and he tells me to summon an unbound Dremora on on the roof of one of the towers. The Dremora wants to fight, so I let him fight me frosty boy and flame lady until he dies. I then summon him again and he wants a second round, so I put the beat down on him again and wouldn't you guess it? third time's the charm and he goes to get me a sigil stone. When I summon him again, I get the sigil stone and take it back to Finnis, who looks at it and gives me the summon flamethrall conjuration spell, which summons a permanent flame lady. I also go ahead and buy the conjure storm atronach spell, as well as the frost and storm thrall spells, and right when I go to try them out, I find out I can't. I don't have enough magicka, and this is super disappointing. I thought about going off and leveling another skill to 100, 
just to get enough level ups to be able to cast any of these, but I'm tired of leveling skills right now, so I just head off to the Riverwood Inn and speak to Delphine, who is surprised to hear that the Thalmor know nothing about the dragons and are looking for a man named Esburn. She tells me that Esburn is a Blades archivist who conveniently knows more about dragons than anybody else. So I head off to Riften, where the Thalmor think that he's hiding, and talk to a merchant named Brynjolf who asks me to break the law. I agree, and then get arrested, and he tells me that Esburn is in the Ratway Warrens, so I head down through the Ratway and, uh, wow. This was tough. I died multiple times to everything from traps to melee attackers to my own flame lady dying and setting an oil fire. It was brutal, but eventually we make it to the Ratway Vault and there's Thalmor there. I summon my minions to deal with them without too much issue and I make my way to the Ratway Warren where Esburn is hiding and after convincing him I'm a friend, he spends a while opening a comical amount of locks on his door and then tells me the end of the world is here and there's nothing to do. I then tell him I'm dragonborn and he says that we need to go meet Delphine. When we go to leave the Ratway, more Thalmor come in and, uh, kill me. Well, I try again and this time it's a slow fight but eventually I end up killing off the Thalmor soldier and a wizard who actually used a frosty boy against me. Little did they know, I'm the true summoner and their summons pale in comparison to mine. After that, we make our way back to Riverwood again and reunite Esburn with Delphine and they talk for a while about some fancy wall that we need to find and ask if I want to travel with them or meet them there. I decide to travel with them and follow them out of the inn. We eventually reach an opening to a cave and find a huge battle between a dragon and some forsworn going on and I start off by summoning a couple of stormy lads but then in the end feel it's a waste of time and enter the cave ignoring the forsworn and the dragon. After fighting through a few forsworn we reach a couple of puzzles and they aren't difficult, but I almost die to a pressure plate puzzle because my summons decided to step on all the plates. I then make my way to this blood circle and have to cut my hand open in order to activate a giant head door. This is a really weird sentence in any other context. Either way, I make my way into the Skyhaven Temple and find a set of blades armor and take the opportunity to grab a screenshot before listening to Esburn talk about Alduin. In the end, we come to the conclusion that I need to speak with the Greybeards about about some shout that can be used to defeat Alduin, so I head off to the Greybeards and their nope, speaker says he not. won't help me until he gets the verbal equivalent of a backhand. From another Greybeard member and says he'll teach me how to reach their leader Parthenax. I then make my way outside and he teaches me three words of power in order to clear the deadly fog that leads up to the peak of the mountain. I then spend a while scaling the mountain path until I reach the peak and meet a dragon named Parthenax. We then have a really long conversation about the past and dragons and he tells me to get an Elder Scroll. You know, no biggie. I go off and speak to the orc lore keeper over at the college of Winterhold, and he tells me some crazy dude who went off north into the ice fields in search of some Dwimmer artifact knows about the Elder Scrolls. With no better leads to follow, I also head off north of Winterhold in search of a crazy man. I find him in a cave with a giant dwarven cube, and he tells me the Elder Scroll I'm looking for is in an old abandoned dwarven city, and I need to go there with a strange cube and use it in order to get the Elder Scroll and then bring the cube back to him. I head off to the entrance of the Dwarven City and freeze to death right before I get inside. Well, I die like this a couple more times before reloading an earlier save and running to the Winterhold Inn to warm up before heading to the city. Once I reach the city, I encounter what is possibly the hardest combat section of the run. I die so, 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 so many times trying to get through this dungeon. Even enemies who I think are supposed to be minor nuisances like the spider bots are killing me in just a couple of hits. It's an absolute slog through all of 
these robots, but at least they don't have many ranged attacks, so I can just run behind my frosty boys and stormy lads and let the enemies aggro onto them instead of me. The same can't be said for the Falmer deeper inside this dungeon. They one-shot me from full HP with their bows regardless of where they hit me, and I die more times than I could keep track of to this alone. I keep slogging through them, dying over and over, sometimes to my own stupidity on things like obvious traps, until I reach a huge room with a dwarven centurion in it. I summon two frosty boys and hide away before getting this epic shot of the action. I don't know why, but this just reminds me of professional wrestling and I love it. Either way, my frosty boys eventually manage to fell the centurion and then I die to this dude with a fireball spell? Well then, I watch the Robo Frosty rematch and then proceed to kill this dude and his girlfriend before heading down a staircase through a door and well, this dungeon just does not end, does it? Haven't I suffered enough Skyrim gods? Well, this cavernous area is filled with cool sights and sounds, and a lot of Falmer with bows. I die a bunch to these inbred snipers until eventually I get lucky enough to run past most of them and finally reach the room with the Elder Scroll. I then spend a long time trying to figure out the puzzle of this room and, uh, yeah. I couldn't, so I looked up a guide and what? I'm just supposed to hit these two buttons a bunch of times randomly and it does something? I load back in and literally the next time I hit a button it progresses. Wow, I gave up right before succeeding. That is something else. Either way, this puzzle is dumb and I hate it, but in the end we get the Elder Scroll and make our way back up to High Hrothgar and I'm worried about freezing to death up on this mountain as the first time meeting Parthenax, it was close. But I go at it again and make it up to Parthenax before ignoring his monologue to open the Elder Scroll and watch the world's oldest movie. The picture show gives me the Dragon Rin shout and when it ends I uh die. Yep, I froze to death. Well, this may be a bit of a problem. I decided to run to Whiterun and grab the best warmth clothing and armor I could find before coming back and opening the Elder Scroll again and this time we crash. It is just not my day. We make the hike to the peak once again, watch the movie, and then Alduin shows up and we have to start fighting him and it is rough. I end up dying a few times. The big problem is the shell Alduin uses to cause meteors to fall at random. I can only really take one hit before dying and I end up having to stare at the sky to dodge them as they come and only look down to use the dragon wrench shout to keep him landed. I keep this up and quick save every 30 to 40 seconds and this strategy ends up working after a few deaths and Alduin flies away and we have to find out where he went. Parthenax says we should trap a dragon, and honestly, that sounds dope. So I head off to Whiterun and convince the Jarl to let us use his palace to trap a dragon, only to need to go back to Parthenax. Oh man, I am hating this trip up the mountain more each time I do it. Hopefully this is the last time I have to do it, and when I reach Parthenax, he tells me that all I have to do is say the dragon's name really loud. Wow, that was worth the 7,000 step trip. With that stunning information in my pocket, I waltz back down to Whiterun and summon the dragon only to die quickly after. I try again, this time hiding behind a wall and using dragon rend on him until he walks into the trap and gets captured. I then talk with him for a while and he offers to take me to Skuldafin, which is how we will reach Sovngarde, which is where Alduin ran off to. I hop on his back and fly off to Skuldafin and die to a dragon immediately. I try again and the same thing happens and this is just gonna be brutal isn't it? I decide to run around and get some healing supplies before trying again and when I do we manage to get a bit further but I get stuck in a death loop to a quick save. I try again and this time we do a lot better nearly killing the dragon but I realize I'm about to freeze to death and well my best option is just to try and run past everything. I die a few times but I do eventually make it all the way past all the enemies and make it inside the Skuldafin temple. The temple itself has a challenging beginning for us and I end up dying to the Draugr inside the first room a few times but eventually I find a winning combination of summons and hiding and we progress through the entire temple relatively easily. There are a lot of Draugr, some bears, puzzles, you know, standard Skyrim dungeon stuff. 
Either way, after killing the final Draugr boss, I exit the temple and I see this huge set piece set up and a dude in a robe is walking around and there's dragons and Draugr and I say nope to all of that and run past a dude in a robe, activate a stick that's stuck in a circle before jumping into a portal to Sovngarde. Once inside Sovngarde, I have to start using the clear skies shout to make my way through a mist and out of nowhere, Alduin appears and I run for my life. I eventually I actually reach a bridge to the Hall of Valor and have to fight a man named Sun to gain entrance. Once inside the Hall of Valor, I talk to the three heroes from the movie we watched earlier and they agree to help me fight Alduin. Once outside, we have a screaming match with some fog and then Alduin comes to fight us and I end up dying to the damned meteors again and get stuck in another death loop. On my next attempt, things go really smoothly. I hide in the bones of the dragon bridge and use dragon rend to keep Alduin on the ground and after five minutes of watching my stormy lads and the heroes fight Alduin, he dies and and weirdly gets stuck staring at me? I decide to punch him to see if that works, and luckily it does and he dies. I feel this doesn't break the rules of the challenge since this felt like a glitch anyways. Either way, with Alduin dead, I speak to Sun, who yells me back to the throat of the world, and after talking to Parthenax, we answer the question, can I beat Skyrim with only summons? Yes, yes I can. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting a challenge suggestion. I want to give a special thanks to my patrons and channel members, as their support has been tremendous. If you like this video, check out my last Fallout 4 challenge run as a Protectron. You all are so beautiful, and this is Willow, signing off.